someone for our project is sustainable to be said. About their adjustment during pandemic, please welcome Ms. Karen Norma. Hi, good afternoon everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you, Dr. Norman. Please tell me something about yourself. Uh, yes, uh, hi, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Norman Ramon. I'm currently a BPO. Uh, I belong to a BPO in the city of Macau, Central Region. Uh, I'm here in Valenzuela. And currently, there's a lot of story to tell you, so which one do you want to do? Thank deliver all those desktops to the agents at the arrangement at home. So it's really a risk on the company's cost, especially um, they are investigating. They invest on those computers and they will and they, they decided to send it at home so that we their agents or employees can stay work. Since not all of not all of the employees have computer desktop in their home so uh, just, just so to have an adjustment, they, they, they took the risk in uh, sending those computers, especially internet. They also invest on the internet because not all of us, not all of uh, us, uh, all of the employees rather, actually have internet. So they took, they reach out with PLBT, they reach out with uh, Globe, uh, Smart, all other 
uh, communication from internet providers, they do, uh, they communicate with their request for a model. They actually invest a lot. I'm not sure how much the cost of it is one, but yeah, it's really a big risk on the part of the company. Just to make sure that all of the employees will still work, even though despite of the day. Best adjustment made by your company to reduce pandemic. How could we change from one quick quick? Explain why. Um, at some house, yes, it's safe because, like I mentioned earlier, we promote quick and tourism if, if they want to do it here. Uh, there's actually this advantage and advantage, yes, because this advantage because most of the during this pandemic, most of the reservation was actually cancelled. And then, uh, so, less job for some of the people on that hotel. But for us, we still require, uh, we, we still assist for customer who would like to go. Um, what we're doing is, we relocate the, the, the hotel with people things. So, for example, in a situation like there is a, uh, uh, cases of uh, COVID or that would be for so when they walk into the cancer, instead of canceling it, what we do is to relocate it to a different hotel that doesn't have the case of uh, COVID people. So somehow we can still contribute because even though um, we can we can still relocate the the relocate the reservation, we still promote other uh, hotels here in the city. Can you please tell us about your experience in the onboarding and the new employees? What was your process with them? On onboarding process, similarly to hiring, actually I'm not part of the, the team who will handle the onboarding, but my experience during that time when I was being hired, is actually there is a 12 stages that I need to last. Imagine I started at 10 a.m. Uh, on that cross, and then I went home for it. Because of that work stages, there's a lot of things that I need to pass that uh, first interview, uh, or initial interview, then exam, and then we have to provide our biometrics. Uh, and then final interview, we have on the seven, seven stage. And then job offer, it's actually one day process. But uh, yeah, it takes uh, actually a while. Or it takes how many hours before I can take it until the job offer and then I feel like I'm going to Or just take it. Well, actually, do this because it's 4 a.m. when you're ready. They spend a lot. Yeah, they really spend a lot of money. Especially even they're working from home, they still want to make sure that the same procedure, the same protocol, the same standard operation procedures to be implemented. Um, so yeah, just like what I mentioned earlier, they they, they put me some standard computers more than even though there's no guarantee when this pandemic will end. Uh, if you took that opportunity to take the risk and then send all those uh, equipment to the employees just to make sure that we're, we're still working from home. Tell us about the time when the customer called us to How did you handle this? What was the answer? At that time, well, I feel that the caller you can imagine 12 midnight, they still, they're still not in their hotel. So initially this caller took a reservation on their day, and then when he got there, the hotel got overbooking. So it's not, it's not the fault, it's not our fault, it's not the fault of, of the caller, it's the fault of the hotel. Because they sell the, the room that was already sold by, the, uh, by our system.
by the system that we are in. So, it's hard to deal with that call, especially at 12 minutes, where do, where do you want the caller or the customer to sleep at that time? It's a bit nice there. And here, it's, it's, I think it's day around 1 or 1 or 2 p.m. Uh, in the afternoon, our time. But there, it's 12 midnight. So the question is, where do you want me to sleep? That's the problem. I understand it's frustration. So what I do, I relocate. I relocate the hotel. Somewhere near, within that city. But it's not really, um, it, uh, it's really inconvenient on the part of the you will have to travel two hours during that midnight if you want to sleep instead of going to the hotel. So what I did is to book, uh, relocate the whole reservation and make sure I reach up with that call, with that hotel, the set call, through phone, and then make sure that you will be, uh, you will be accommodated by that time. So it's a bad experience for the caller. It's really frustrated, it's really frustrated at that time. Luckily, I was able to find one hotel that would satisfy his needs, at least for the night. So we had a negative feedback regarding that. But I was able to pacify him for that night. For that time. But still, the negative feedback was to the company. Okay, Mr. Norman, thank you for your we will appreciate your time and effort and answering our questions for you and thank you again and thank you thank you everyone bye guys